Good evening, good evening. I'm going to start off in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together, Lord. We ask that you just help us have clarity as we walk out the plans that you have given us for this season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Did everybody get a handout? Okay. So I know you've all been going to classes today, and I've been going to classes as well. But what God told me to do for this class is to make it more or less a dialogue than a monologue. Okay. So a dialogue is when we all get to share from each other and we all get to talk, okay? okay. So we're going to just get started because we know time is of the essence. Okay. So the name of this class is called The Plan of Action. And the plan of action, when I think about the plan of action, I think about what's the plan and then what are the actions that I'm going to take to get to that destination. So one thing about having a plan is, whenever you're going somewhere, you need to have a final destination of where it is that you're going. Have you ever went to the airport to buy a ticket or bought a ticket to go somewhere? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that happens is when you call and you say, um, I want to leave Cleveland. What's the first thing that they're going to ask you? Where you want to go. Where you want to go. They can't even sell you a ticket if you right. don't have a destination. Right. So the same thing in life, we need to know where it is that we want to go because if we don't know where we want to go, how will we know when we get there? Right. Am I here? Am I here? You have your kids, y'all took the kids somewhere and be like, are we there yet? Are we there? No, we're not there yet. And we study driving, are you there yet? Are you there yet? So when we have a plan of action, we need to think about where it is that we want to go. What is God telling us to do for this time, for this season? So I just wanted to share with you four points that's important for having an action plan. So we're going to follow the handout until the time runs out. Amen? Amen. All right. So first you have to have a vision, a mission, the goals, and then there is the action plan. So the definition of action plan, I looked it up in Webster's Dictionary, and it says, action plan, a sequence of steps that must be taken or activities that must be performed well. I like that it said well. well. Because you can perform these activities, but if you don't perform them well, mm -hmm. you won't get to the destination that you're looking to mm -hmm. acquire. For a strategy to succeed, an action plan has three major elements. Mm -hmm. So the three major elements that an action plan plan has, one is a specific task. And what is a specific task? Just read what it says. <laughs> right. So the specific task is what will be done and then who will do it. Because a lot of times you can come together in a group and you can say, okay, we're going to do this. But if you don't assign those tasks to somebody, you can come back a week later and nothing is done. Because the assignment, the task wasn't assigned to anybody. So we assign that task to somebody, the possibility of it getting done is so much greater. True. Then we have the time horizon. What does it say a time horizon is? When, when it will be done. When it will be done. So we got to have a timeline of when it go, when it's going to be done. Because a lot of times we always say, someday I will. Right, right. And someday true. I will. That's and true. someday never comes. Right, so if we have right. a timeline within the next 12 months, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. The likelihood of that happening within that timeline is more than not. Okay? Amen. The last one is the resources allocation. What are resource allocations? So it's like, okay, what am I going to designate to this particular task? Like one time, it was a whole year, I worked with um, sickle cell affected families. So for that whole year, when I was working in the salon, all of my tips were designated towards that organization. So when somebody gave me a tip, I put it to the side because I'm going to donate this money to sickle cell. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when God is calling us to do something, we won't even step forward because we say, you know what, we don't have the money for it. Mm -hmm. But God is looking for us to take the necessary steps, Amen. and then the money will come. And a lot of times when we take those steps, then somebody will ask us, what are we doing or where are we going? And you'll be surprised who's going to fund that for you. But it's just wow. a matter of seeing if you're going to take those steps. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that action consists of, it says, faith without works is what? Dead. Faith without works is dead because a lack of faith or the works reveal unchanged life or a spiritually dead heart. So we want to have the faith to also take the action. Like I said, if we don't do it, then we're not taking any action, and the possibility of it happening is slim to none. Amen? Amen. So 
There are strategic plans in the Christian content as it relates to taking a plan of action. So some of those plans are Bible study. It's important for us to attend Bible study. We can go to church every Sunday, but it's Bible study is when we get that meat. It's that Bible study that we get that foundation. It's that Bible study that we learn how to apply this word to our lives. So as Christians, when we want to do a plan of action, it's very important for us to attend Bible study. Next, as Christians, it's very important for us to pray. And what is prayer? Because it's just that simple, talking to God. You know, a lot of times people make it real spooky and real spiritually deep, but prayer is just simply talking to God. So first we want to attend Bible study to have that foundation, and then we want to talk to God. Then after we talk to God, it says the spirit of prophecy. Has anybody ever been prophesied to? So when you have a spirit of prophecy and somebody feels an unction to share something with you, if you don't seek God for those instructions, you can be lost. Because sometimes we get a word from the Lord, and then we don't know what to do with those instructions. I've heard people say, somebody say, you know what, thus saith the Lord, you're going to be a pastor, you're going to travel the world, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. We know that with prophecy, they prophesy in part because they see in part. So when we see the word from the Lord, our next thing is to see God's face for instructions Mm -hmm. as it relates to that prophecy. Because sometimes you hear something, and somebody say, okay, you're going to be a pastor, and you're going to do this, and I'm about to start a church tomorrow. That wasn't part of it. You got to do the prep work. You got to do the time. You got to find out the plan of action. Does he want you to be a pastor now? Does he want you to be a pastor here? Does he want you to go to Africa? You know, what is it that he wants you to do? So we got to seek his faith to get those instructions. And then next it says the local community needs. When God is calling us, whether you're in ministry, whether you're a pastor, whether you're working with a group or organization, you have to find out what are those local needs of the community. Because then that way you can satisfy those needs. And know that we're all part of the body of Christ, but everybody has a different function. So if my sister over here goes out and feeds the hungry, and then I have something else that I want to do, I want to empower women, that's okay. Because when somebody come hungry, I'm going to send them to my sister over here. So you got to be clear on what it is that God is calling you to do, and be clear on the community that you're serving. Because you don't have to be everything to everybody. You just got to be what God called you to be. Amen? That's right. That's right. And then it says the local congregations, talents, and spiritual gifts. It's important to find out what your talents and spiritual gifts are because as we come together as the body of Christ, we can use those talents and spiritual gifts to help uplift the body of Christ. Just like the example I said about empowering women and with the homeless, some of us have administrative tasks that we can do and we can be very well at that. Other people have a heart for the people so they can go out and evangelize. Somebody else has a different gift that they can use. So when somebody else has different gifts, we want to come together and be the whole body. The feet cannot be the ear. That's right. The That's eye right. cannot be the mouth. That's right. But the eye needs to be able to see. The feet needs to be able to walk. So it's important for us to know what our spiritual gifts is so we can bring them to the body so we can be whole. Amen. 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 So now let's go into the vision. The vision is the what, the mission is the how. Can somebody read what it says about vision for me? What does it say about vision? God is leading the blind. Without vision, the people perish. Vision leads to vision. So we have to have a vision of what it is that God has called us to do. And in that vision, we want to be clear about what it is that God has called us to do. And then next we have the mission. So the mission and the vision go hand in hand. you got to have the vision first, and then the mission is going to tell me how am I going to do the vision. Amen? Amen. So when we're working on a plan of action, it's important for us to have a mission statement and also a vision statement to get to the plan. Amen? Wow. The vision, the mission leads to the spiritual growth. So the how is going to lead to the spiritual growth that we're going to apply to whatever it is that God is calling us to do. The vision process. Can somebody read that? The vision process. By God's grace and power, who and what will we be for Jesus in the community we serve? Who are we called to be? What are we called to do? So you got to be crystal clear on that. Who are you called to be? You're not called to be a a carbon copy of somebody else. You're called to be an original. So you got to know what does that original look like for me. And then I need to stand up and be everything that God has called me to be. 
And in doing that, we need to know who we're called to be and then what we're called to do. Because everybody has a different assignment in the body of Christ yes. so we can all function as the body. Yes. Amen. The visioning process. What we do about the surrounding community and their needs, the vision statement is who you are and where you are and what you do, who you do it for, why you do it. The vision statement should be short, memorable, and easy to understand. So you should have a vision statement for your life. Mm -hmm. right. You should have a mission statement for your life. And then once you have that for your life, when you go to connect with someone else, you can be crystal clear, is this a fit for me? You understand? Mm -hmm. I got a call the other day, this girl called me, and she was like, we're doing a summit, and the summit is for moms and, and, and um, women that are expecting babies and all that stuff. That ain't for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm an inspirational speaker, and I speak on a lot of different topics, but babies and moms, and that's not my, that's not my lane, amen? Right, right, right. So if you call me and say, you want to speak about business, sign me up. If you want to speak about the beauty industry, sign me up. If you want to speak about the word of God, sign me up. But for babies, sorry, baby, I ain't going to be able to do that. <laughs> That don't fit with my yeah. vision statement, what I have going on for me. So when you're clear about your mission and your vision, you'll know when to say yes and when to say no. Amen? Amen. We as Christians in the body of Christ, I was reading this book and it said there's two words that don't go together, and that is no Lord. Wow. Two words don't go together. So if God is calling you to do something, right. you got to be crystal clear and know that God is calling you to do something. Because even if God is calling you to do something and it's not your life, he's going to grace you to be able to do it. He's going to grace That's you to be right. able to do That's that. True. Because when God is calling you to do something, he's going to give you the grace to be able to do it. Yes. Even if it ain't your life. Amen? Amen. I remember when we first took over at the church for Pastor Kathy and Pastor James. Amen. And my husband, it was my husband and our two kids. We was the church. Amen? <laughs> so then I did praise and worship. I did offering. I did the greeter. I did all of that. I did all. So I would reach people at the door as they would come in. And I would come up front and do praise and worship. Then after that, I would introduce my husband, I would go over there and get the sound ready, then I would come back, and then I would take up the offer. God graced me yes. to do all those things yes. at that time. And then when our praise and worship leader came and said, my voice went away. <laughs> I, I was singing a little, at least I thought I was, you know. But God had graced me yes. to do it at that yes. time. Yes. So when God graced you to do something, then when he sends the appointing person with the anointing for it, right. amen, because right. right. there's a difference in being graced to yes. do something than and being anointed to, to do amen. something. When you're anointed to do something, that's who you are. Right. That's the fiber of your being. That oozes out of you. So you can't help but do it. But when God graces you to do something, that's really not your anointing, but he's called you to do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's good. So that's good. in Proverbs 29 and 18, what does it say in the new, I mean in the King James Version? Where, Where there is no vision, the people will perish. Will perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. The happy is he. And then I also have the amplified version. What does the amplified version say? Where there is no vision, no revelation of God uh, and his word, and the people uh, are unrestrained. unrestrained, but happy and blessed. and blessed is he who keeps, keeps the law of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. So it says where, the vision, where there is no vision, the people perish. Because it's the vision that gives them strength. It's the vision that gives them yes. something to focus on. It's the vision that gives them hope to hold on to. It's that vision that keeps us powered up, amen? amen? So when we have a vision, something that we're going after, we're headed for that prize. We have the vision in front of us. So even though we have tough days, even though things don't work out the way that we plan them to do, just knowing that we're headed for something greater gives us energy to press yes. on to that vision, amen? amen. amen. In Habakkuk 2 and 2 it says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain right. upon tablets yes. that they may run and read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, mm -hmm. but at the end it shall speak and not lie. So it tarry, mm -hmm. wait for it, because it shall surely come. 
So it's telling us it is important for us to write that vision down. Why is it important for us to write the vision down? It's important for us to write it down so when somebody else comes along, I can say, read this. This is the vision. And then you can read it and say, you know what? This lines up with every fiber of my being. I want to hook up with you. I want to go where you're going. But if I have to keep explaining the vision just verbally and say, I might miss a piece. Right. There you go. I yeah. might not say something. Right. I might be tired that day. And when I communicate it to you, I may not communicate it with the vigor that it should have behind it. But if I write the vision down and I make it plain, according to the scriptures, it says those that read it will run with it. Amen. Though it may tear me, though it may not come today. Wait on it, because it will surely come to pass. So if God has called us to do something and has given us a vision, we should wait on it. And what yes. that vision Thank does for me, I read it, and it reminds me of where it is that I'm going. Amen. I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be this. Amen. And that's when I'm reading that vision. When I grow up, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. That's right. That's right. And then it says, the mission takes makes the vision a reality. So as we write the vision down, then we say how we're going to accomplish this. And then that's where the mission comes into place. A mission statement is specific ways that you plan to make the church's vision a reality or your vision a reality. So it's important for us to have that written down. And Matthew says, go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the great commission for the church. So that is our commission. That's something that we're supposed to be doing during this time and during this season. And sometimes we may have a great big vision. On the paper, how do, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. So it doesn't matter how great the vision is. One step at a time, we're getting closer and closer to that vision. Amen? Amen. Amen. And in closing, I wanted to share with you all how to write down your vision is to plan goals. And to plan goals, we want to do something called SMART goals. Mm -hmm. And SMART goals stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant to the vision, and time-specific. So a specific goal is like something that I'm definitely going to do. And you want to write that down. And then that goal should be measurable. That should know that in this time or with this amount of money, that's going to be the measurable piece to it. And then it says it should be achievable. So it shouldn't be a pie in the sky. If I'm only making $2 a day, I'm not going to make $200,000 next week. Amen? So I got to take those baby steps to get to that. That's me obtainable. So it wants to be something that's realistically obtainable. And then it has to be relevant to the vision. So we're going back to the vision. So when I'm writing down these goals, they should be relevant to the vision that I've already written out. And then last, it needs to be time specific. It needs to be at a certain time. Because if I say whenever or one day I will, I probably won't. But we want to definitely put a timeline on it. Amen? In Proverbs 19 and 21 it says, There are many devices, and one scripture says plans. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So one uh, translation said, There's many plans in a man's heart but the Lord's purpose will prevail. How many of y'all planned something and it just didn't go the oh, way that yeah. you planned? Man. You had it all down to the yeah. T, how you was going to do it and everything. Just recently, I graduated from school. I got my bachelor's degree in business. Yeah. And my plan, all when I was going to school, thank you, was I'm going to get a job. Now, my y'all been an entrepreneur all my life. All my life. And I know the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. Okay? So my husband went full time in the ministry. He was like, I'm going full time in the ministry. I'm like, You sure you heard from God? <laughs> God didn't tell me that, but I'm going to step out on your faith. Amen? So he went full time in the ministry. So I'm in school. I'm like, Okay, well, you know what? When I finish school, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to have some benefits. I'm going to have a 401k. I'm going to have paid vacations. I, I, we're going to do this. So no sooner than I finish school, no sooner than I finished school, I was doing something, and they started sending you emails telling you about these job positions. The Holy Spirit spoke to me so clear, just like I'm speaking to y'all right now. He said, I'm continue your entrepreneur journey. I said, who said that? He was like, continue your entrepreneur journey. From that point in, I never looked at any more applications. I never did anything. And God just really, really started providing and started opening up my business and showing me what was next. It's now, mind you, I've been there. working behind the chair, a styling here for 30 years. That's, mm -hmm. that's all I know how to do. But then afterwards, like, you've been running a business for 
30 years. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this since you was 10 years old. And you've made mistakes and you can help other people. So he opened up the door to help me with a coaching business. So now I help coach entrepreneurs. He started sending me clients, amen, amen. that was needed because of coaching. Because when you was running a successful business, people are always calling you for advice, right? Mm -hmm. And then when they're calling you for advice, you was giving it away for free, right? right and then somebody right. said, you can get paid for this. I'm like, okay, it's $50 an hour right. for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the phone calls went down a little bit, but a few people was paying $50 an hour. But now I got a degree, okay? It's $150 yeah, yeah. an hour. <laughs> so it's like when you are crystal clear on what God is yeah. calling you to do, yes. you have to know without a shadow of a doubt, mm. this is what God is calling you to do. Amen? Amen. Did y'all learn something today? Ooh, Give it up for yeah. Jesus. Okay, my time is up. Thank you for your.